I told y'all the word nigga was making a comeback. I told y'all. Y'all ain't want to believe me. You know, you didn't want to believe me. You thought the N-word was buried. Well, in Texas, an unusual funeral, not for a person, but for a racial slur. Yes, a Houston area group buried the N-word. And as CNN's Rick Sanchez reports, media buzz may have triggered what's becoming a movement. And a group in Texas thinks it's time to bury it. They gathered Saturday to do just that. I would like for you to take note of the casket. The first documented use was 1786 which we laid to rest today, 777. We want positive affirmations from everyone that the N-word dies with all of this. The message is spreading. Brazoria, Texas is a small industrial city with 2,800 residents. In January, its mayor became the first in the nation to propose an ordinance banning the use of the N-word. In March, New York became the first city to pass a resolution. And in April, music mogul Russell Simmons called on recording artists to stop using it. Told you as soon as Obama sit down in that Oval Office, they was going to get him. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Yeah, I told you. Now there's them watermelon patches all throughout the White House. You see that? They sending this stuff around in emails. <laughs> Man, Rose Garden is not a watermelon patch. Mayor of Los Alamitos, California, is apologizing today for an email he sent that's being called racist and offensive. The mayor emailed this picture showing the White House lawn planted with watermelons with the title, No Easter Egg Hunt This Year. An African-American businesswoman and community volunteer who received the email says she was horrified. The mayor initially said he was intending to be funny. Now he acknowledges sending out the picture was poor judgment. said racism was dead. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? <laughs> that they were dumb enough to believe that? In March, Barack Obama, the presumptive Democratic Party nominee, spoke about his race and its possible impact on the presidential election. Thank you so Thank you. He was referring to Thank the Democratic you. Party primaries. Despite the temptation to view my candidacy through a purely racial lens, we won commanding victories in states with some of the whitest populations in the country. Barack Obama won millions of votes from white Democrats during primary contests against Senator Hillary Clinton. On college campuses, even in southern Republican states, Obama has been extremely popular with students. This is the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. We came here to ask some students whether they thought that race will have an impact on the 2008 presidential election. Specifically, we asked them if they thought America was ready to elect an African American as president. I think a lot of people are ready and eager to put the past behind them and to really move forward and take bigger strides than they, we have in the past. University of Virginia students Jeff Skelly and Chris Blank say race will be a factor in the election, but not for them. I mean, I think it's still going to be an issue for some voters. I think it'll be a very small percentage of the voters. Maybe enough to turn an election, hopefully not. I sincerely feel that the people who aren't going to vote for him because he's African American, we're never going to vote for a Democrat anyway. I think we're ready. I'm not sure. VOA spoke to dozens of voters across the country. Most said America is ready to elect a black president. But political observers say gauging views on race can be difficult, in part because many hide their feelings. But now he's in a national campaign against Republican Senator John McCain. A moment hardly anyone believed possible just a few months ago. Hello, Chicago! 
After an epic 21-month campaign, the most costly in US history, the 47-year-old senator from Illinois reaches the pinnacle of his dizzying ascent to power. It's been a long time coming, but tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. The result was a landslide. His Republican rival was gracious in defeat. This is an historic election, and I recognize the special significance it has for African Americans and for the special pride that must be theirs tonight. Black man was elected president. Racism is dead. All I did was make things worse. <sighs> what do I mean by that? All the racist people that can't stand a black man are gonna take it out on every motorist they pull over. We are getting a new look at the video showing a deadly officer involved shooting in Louisiana. We must warn you, the sight and the sounds are graphic. Next, US police are embroiled in yet another controversy after getting caught this time using mug shots of black suspects for target practice. Get out recently in North Miami. Bless his soul. Police shot this boy outside my apartment. They killed him. What do I mean by that? All the racist people that can't stand a black man gonna take it out on every motorist they pull over. That's black or minority. Because somebody among their nation that made it to the head of this state. My next guest says race relations are actually worse after eight years of America's first black president, and she voted for Obama twice. She's Independent Journal Review's Antonia Okafor. She joins me now. Good to see you, Antonia. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. I so appreciate it as well. we've, we've had six major race riots on the president's watch, and you remember that New York Times CBS poll last summer that said. 70% of the people who responded said race relations have plummeted to lows not seen since the Rodney King uh, case in 1992. So how can Obama say race relations are better? Well, the thing is, he can't. Um, he can definitely, well, he can definitely he's, he do it already. I mean, he's, he's done it, and, and I'm sure people are going to believe him, um, sadly. But, you know, the facts are the facts. And, uh, you know, between, I mean, with, within African Americans, um, you know, in 2008, they said that 61% uh, of them thought that racial, um, you know, the racial um, relationship between whites and blacks was actually favorable. But then it, now, in 2016, um, 2017, it's plummeted to 49%. And so, obviously, um, there's, there's a disconnect between what uh, President Obama is saying, saying that, you know, racial relations are better. And then we're seeing on TV continuously um, that proves the opposite. If there is anyone out there who still doubts that America is a place where all things are possible, tonight is your answer. That was the era of Yes We Can when black America seemed poised to claim a confidence, a power, a parity long denied it. But America was not ready. To me, 
it's just, this is a race war. You know, you have uh, the black against the white, the white against the black. in my bag swag from the swamps of washington to the bayou of the south beneath the surface of the post-racial society fear anger and the deep roots of a history still unresolved This is CNN Tonight. I'm Don Lemon. This is what America is talking about right now. Does this offend you? It's a Confederate flag. Is it a symbol of Southern pride or a symbol of hate? And then, what about this? Does this offend you? This word? President Obama said it out loud in an interview and a lot of people are shocked. Racism, we are not cured of, clearly, uh, and 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 it's not just a matter of uh, it not being polite to say nigger in public. That's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. Uh, something called disconfirmed expectancy, which is a psychological term for failed prophecy. 